Welcome to Reputation Revolution. This is the podcast where we help individuals like you to establish your voice in the marketplace, enhance the credibility of that voice, extend the reach of your story and your message, and finally, extract value from your efforts in building a meaningful personal brand that's both recognized and respected. Now, on with the show. According to the Macmillan Dictionary, the reputation economy is one in which the reputation of an individual, product or business, as decided by the judgment of others, is their most important asset. We're all about the individual here on the Reputation Revolution Show, and we're talking about the power of the personal brand, folks, and how it's the biggest asset we have. The way I look at it, Why wouldn't you want to put your best foot forward? Why wouldn't you want to influence the perceptions that people have of you? Not in a slimy and fake way, but with authenticity by adding value and serving others. The possibilities for those individuals who understand the power of reputation and are able to grow their brand in a genuine way, they are endless. Now, there are roadblocks many of us have, granted, Some people have issues with clarity in how they want to show up in the world. Others have limiting beliefs that hold them back for whatever reason. We can create a pathway for ourselves. We can take control of our professional lives and influence in a positive and genuine way how people perceive us. That is the theme for today's show. But first, Reputation Revolution is brought to you by the Credible Authority Academy. Grow your influence and create more impact. Learn how to become a credible, influential voice in your industry. Go to CredibleAuthority.com. If you like what we talk about here on the Reputation Revolution, you will no doubt be interested in what's on offer at the Credible Authority Academy. Okay, let's get into the show. My guest today is Beck Sands, a personal brand and thought leader coach who helps professionals and entrepreneurs stand out in what is a very noisy and crowded world. Beck, welcome to the show. Before we get going, can you please give our listeners a thumbnail sketch of what you do and who you work with? Trevor, thank you so much for having me on. I've been very excited to be on the Reputation Revolution, such a good podcast. Um, So I am a personal brand and thought leader coach, and I work with uh, people who are leaders in their fields to help them to build their personal brands as thought leaders in their space. Uh, So, yeah, I primarily work with corporate women uh, either looking to, to, I guess, build uh, careers in the leadership space or yep. starting their own businesses. And I think whatever you do, whichever way you go, you absolutely need a personal brand and you need to be visible in order to do that. You do indeed. And um, as I said at the in the intro, we're going to cover a fair bit of turf today, um, exploring all the possibilities that come with being a, a thought leader, a knowledge leader, a, a recognised expert. Um, you know, if we build a credible personal brand that's known and respected, what does the world look like? So let's break it down maybe into a couple of parts, mindset and clarity. And I've kind of fence those together because sometimes clarity can have a have an effect on mindset clarity of you know what you want and your goals Absolutely. and then also the opportunities that if we've got a bit of time we'll go into the opportunities that come with being a, an active participant in today's reputation economy so let's start with mindset because i know you know you work with people and 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 how much of what you do with them is around mindset do you think is does everyone have uh, issues and roadblocks and limiting beliefs? Absolutely. Everyone has mindset issues around visibility. I think no one's born with the skills of, uh, you know, putting themselves out there, public speaking, um, coming up with ideas. Like, you know, everyone learns how to uh, be more visible. Everyone learns um, how to do live video. Everyone learns how to, uh, you know, be interviewed and all of that sort of stuff. And so I think that there's always going to be something to shift in terms of mindset and there's yeah. always another level to to go to as well. Yeah. And it's, and, and we'll, we'll break them down in a tick, but I, 
I think that, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's only just me, but it's everyone. And you know what I've found? The more experienced people are, and I tend to work with people who've been in the trenches for, you know, 20 plus oh, years. Yeah. And I've found that they're, the more they've knowledge they've got, the more everything, they're more experienced. Sometimes they're the worst hit with, uh, um, you know, imposter syndrome and roadblocks. Do you find that? Yeah, I think I absolutely do. I have worked with some incredibly senior women in their fields and, you know, really confident and, and you know, but then they do, they have this imposter syndrome and it's like, it's almost like they, they're not allowed to show it in their everyday kind of career and in their everyday life. And so when we work together coaching, it's like, that's when it all kind of comes up. And yeah. I'm like, you know, it's crazy because everyone has it. Like everyone, I think to some extent has this imposter syndrome and yep. yeah, it's really just a matter of, um, I guess identifying what those stories are and what those beliefs are and then re being able to reframe them and to challenge them and to question them. And to know that, you know, you have something to say as well. So I said uh, earlier about clarity and I put clarity with mindset because I guess when we think personal branding and people think, well, I've got to be in this lane, I've got to be known for this. And there's, there's, you know, Absolutely. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, smarts around that. But, you know, when, if people have got a lot of interests, a lot of knowledge, a lot of topics, they've got too much knowledge sometimes, that in itself can be a real grind, can't it? Just just to, for them to get clarity on, on, uh, on what it is that they stand for. 100%. And ironically, everyone is always like, oh, I need another degree. I need another piece of paper before I can, you know, I need that that other accreditation before I can actually go out and be the thought leader. And it's like, often it's the opposite. Often it's yeah. like, you've got so much knowledge. Uh, now you're trying to sift through that and work out what people are going to resonate with and uh, which piece of that you can talk about. And I know like even, you know, I've been in PR for 15 years. I absolutely get that like I I feel like there's so much that I could say about PR and personal brand and then I'm like you know sometimes you just stumped you're like I there's too many topics I don't know where to go with this <laughs> yeah <laughs> so clearly um planning and having you know my whole thing is that you know a rep reputation is your asset you really it's you know you've only got one and uh, you want to make it, you put your best foot forward and how do you want to show up in the world and you want to be able to influence people's perceptions of you, which is really what your brand is. And and so why wouldn't you want to do that in a, in a positive and genuine way? And I stress genuine way. It's not about faking anything, but a little bit of planning, a little bit of thinking, a little bit of, you know, to, trying to plot a path, for want of a better phrase, uh, for where you want to go is it's really work worth doing at the outset. And I know you you work with your clients in that regard. Is it something that comes easy to people? Is it something that you have fights with them? Does it take a long time? Do some get it, some don't? I think it's quite simple once you kind of break it down. Uh, I think the word strategy can be a little bit overwhelming and people can <laughs> kind of go, ah, what are you talking, you know, th like think big, you know, reams of documents. Uh, but really your strategy is just what you're going to do versus what you're not and it's just sitting down and looking like okay who am I you know what am I trying to achieve here with my personal brand it might be if you're in a career it might be that you're wanting the leadership position you know it might be if you're in a business that you're wanting to land new clients and so both of those have a really clear kind of goal right and so then yeah. you can break down okay well then working from there where where shall I go? So uh, who am I trying to uh, reach? Who are my stakeholders here? And yeah. what are the channels that I can use to get in front of them? What are, What's going to be the most effective way? And it's different for everyone. Like I've got a friend who I caught up, caught up with um, the other day who actually doesn't have a personal brand at all, but is very much known as a thought leader in his sector. Uh, and he, so in terms of his personal brand though, he, uh, he is completely all about networking, which is another 
avenue for personal branding, right? Cool. Networking is one of them. So it doesn't always need to be public. It can be behind the scenes as well. But I think it's different depending on who you are, what you're trying to achieve, who the audience is, and then how you want to get in front of them. So I think it is just breaking breaking those things down and then coming yeah. up with a plan rather than just trying to, you know, come up with social media posts on the go, uh, yeah. talking to anyone, for example. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And with this this friend of yours, when they say they don't have a personal brand, they don't go out and push themselves, like, well, they don't have LinkedIn, they don't create content, but they, they prefer to be a little bit more invisible because they, oh, clearly they've got a brand with people who know them because yeah. that's, uh, their, you know, however people are perceiving them uh, as, as a result of their experience with them is their brand, I guess. But what you're saying is that they don't, you know, go out and create content and be active on socials and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's what I meant. For- background. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. And that was the first person that I've, that I know that I've ever met that like does that personal brand without the visibility. And I was just, and I was fascinated by it. I was like, how do you do this? But it's all networking behind the scenes, but being visible in the right rooms. That's right. That, and that's why I think, and and I use the phrase strategic visibility because I mean, that to me is strategic visibility. They know where they want to be seen. And and it's it's not necessarily about having all the followers under the sun. It's about, you know, resonating with the right people. And and that goes back to what you're saying earlier about your plan. Who are you trying to reach? Um, who is your I guess if you know, if you're in a in a corporation and you want a leadership role, then it's the in you know, maybe you want the to reach media and influencers in that industry. Um, if you're, you know, out there about to start a business, then who's, who's the, the potential clients there and then, and then who influences those as well. So there's a, there's a little bit to unpack under, uh, you know, underneath the hood of, of all that. Yeah, there's so much to unpack. I think it really depends what you are trying to achieve. And I think it does come back to that. Uh, I think for me, like, you know, even in my business, I've got a consulting strand and I've got a coaching strand and my brand uh, is like, there. you know, obviously it is just the one brand, but my tactics change uh, according to which business I'm working on. So my coaching business, it's much more of a uh, public kind of visible, (laughs) visible sort of personal brand building uh, activity. Whereas my consulting work is a lot more networking. That's, I'm going to uh, pull the thread on that one, if I may, because you're right. I I mean, I see you on LinkedIn and we're connected and everything and and everything you you. Yeah, the content you create is pretty much all around that I know um, around sort of the coaching side. And, yeah. you know, you've got, um, I think you've got a course coming up and a program uh, you're out there selling and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's all geared around that. Um, in terms of then how do you, how have you sort of juggled that? Is that a, clearly it's a con- conscious decision on the doing the PR consulting versus the coaching. Are you trying to do less of the consulting and more of the, uh, of the, um, of the coaching side of things? Yeah. So when I, from when I very first stepped out of corporate, I kind of said, okay, the consulting is really the low hanging fruit for me to replace the corporate income. Uh, So that's what I did first. So I replaced the corporate income working just a couple of days a week, which was amazing uh, because you can do things so much faster. You don't have all the meetings that you have in house. You don't have all the, you know, all the emails either. So, and those two things pretty much can take up like two to three days a week. (laughs) Funnily. Crazy. So I have, yeah, so I have so much more time. Like I can do a similar amount of work that I did in corporate, but in a much uh, more condensed amount of time as a consultant. And so, uh, yeah, so I work with kind of a few um, retainer brands and just on an ongoing basis. And yeah, they're amazing. Like I love, I love working with those clients and it is like, I can kind of box it in a way. So it's, you know, I do have the the rest of the week. I do have all that other time to work on my coaching business, to build that, to work with coaching clients uh, and all that that entails. And then also just doing creative things like podcasting, <laughs> being a guest on, on this podcast and, yeah. you know, doing the blogs and the writing and the things that are going to have longevity and really build for the future, as opposed to just focusing on the work that I'm doing now in the moment, which is more kind of the consulting work. Yeah. And so there might be listeners who are uh, wanting to maybe change their, you know, they may be 
running a personal brand based business and they might be consulting and they want to you know move it towards um, you know maybe product like the, the other week we had Greg Burgoyne um, uh, who talked all about online courses and productizing your knowledge and you know there's so many ways that we can now go once we've got that knowledge and that brand then um, that we can go down a number of paths but it's really you've built I guess you don't you've already got your reputation in the uh, the PR and communication side of things. So you don't really need to push that too hard because yeah. if you start pushing that hard, you're going to get more business there and you're going to get less again. You won't be able to grow your business on the coaching side and the personal brand and thought leader coaching side. So how do you how do you reconcile that then? I mean, now you've probably, you, you go, you're going all out on the on the thought leadership and personal branding content, which basically says this is who I am. So you're putting pretty much your whole self out publicly on that side, yet you're, you've got the sidebar business of PR consulting. What was that like? Was that, you know, clearly it was a conscious decision. Mm. Did you do it just, you know, it's really hard to think. Did you just go, bang, I'm just going to do it all and just walk away from the other? Because yeah. it's really hard when you've been doing something for so long, you're known for it, and you want to move over into another area, an adjacent area, just to pull the pin on the other side of things. Oh, that yeah, that has been. <laughs> that is... was, it, was it gradual, or did you just <laughs> ripping off the band aid? Is what the the phrase I wanted, the cliche I wanted I'm, to use. <laughs> I, I'm still slowly pulling off the band aid, Trev. <laughs> It's a very slow process. Uh, no, look, I, uh, like I said, like when I first stepped into my business, I was like, right, the first thing I need to do is replace that corporate income. So I was like, low hanging fruit, consulting, get those clients. So I 100% focused on that for probably 18 months uh, and did very little in my coaching business during that time until I had yep. that stability. Uh, because it was kind of like, you know, you do need, uh, I, I guess, as an entrepreneur or a sol- solopreneur, you do need that like stability of income in order to be able to continue to grow, in order to right. continue to exist. And so For me, it was like, okay, focus on getting that uh, and then I can start to build the coaching business. But what I've wanted to do is really build build strong foundations for the coaching business. So work on, you know, getting it right rather than just trying to work with a lot of clients very quickly, but just building the foundation so that I can scale it and so that it can be around for a long time, right? So. For me, I had the freedom to be able to do that rather than being under a lot of pressure. So having the consulting work has allowed me the freedom to be able to create new things, try new things in the coaching business, see what works, see what sticks, see who I really love working with, see who uh, resonates working with me, you know. So there's so many different things, I think, that when you are starting something new that's outside of the profession that you've been in for a really long time, it is, it is a trial and error kind of situation. Yeah. <laughs> like there's, you know, you can do strategy and you can work with coaches and you can get, um, you know, you can have your plan set in, in stone. But then until you actually try things, until you implement, see what people actually pay for, um, I think that you just do need that freedom to be able to play. Yeah. And when you started... So you you left a corporate job, you started your consulting business, so you wanted to work only a few days a week to free you up to do other things. So at that point, were you then had in mind that you're going to try and move down the, the sort of the coaching path? Yeah, so I'd been already, I had done my coaching certification when I was still in corporate uh, and I had been doing a lot of different things on the side when I was in corporate. So I had a I had a lifestyle blog for two years that I blogged in the evenings. Um, So I always knew, like I always had an entrepreneurial streak. I always knew that like I wanted to do more than PR. I always knew that I wanted to do more than just PR and comms. Um, You know, I kind of looked up the ladder and I was like, oh, I don't necessarily want to be my managers. (laughs) Um, but then funnily enough, as I started, you know, on that journey of, you know, having the blog and I did a whole bunch of courses and online business courses and this and that. And as I kind of, you know, grew on that journey, my career went from strength to strength. And then I ended up being like the head of PR at the company that I was in and, uh, you know, getting promoted multiple times. And then there was always something more. So it actually took me seven years before I, like, while I was doing things on the side, before I actually went full time into my business. Look, it's a really good 
story, Beck, because I think there's a lot of people who, um, you know, they've and, – and maybe COVID is has fast-tracked this, you know, we hear about – quiet quitting and the great resignation all these other all these other phrases but you know the the safest place to be is running ironically running your own business now and being in control because you know if you're working for a big company or whatever you can lose you know it doesn't matter how long you've been there you can lose that gig pretty quickly and then what have you got to fall back on and and I think that you know I, I'm talking to a lot of people now who have who have made that move from corporate um, and and you know where they've got their reputation and their identity, yeah. which is a really big thing, and yep. now starting off kind of from scratch again, I guess not really from scratch because they're they're still known probably within their industry and have a reputation. Yeah. But then there's a whole ball game. Is you really you are the business? You actually have to get out there, and that's where that. The notion that um, yeah, I know I know quite a few people who don't want to put themselves out, and and I was very much in that mindset as well, and you know I still am to a degree about you know how much is enough to put yourself out there. What does that mean? Yeah, and look, you are right, one hundred percent. That it doesn't matter, like if you're in a career or if you're in a business, whatever it is that you're wanting to do as a professional, you need to have visibility because otherwise. People are going to be like, what do you do? What does that guy do? What does that girl do? Mm. <laughs> I can't remember. You know, no one's a mind reader. And so you do need to kind of um, be your own uh, champion in a way uh, and be your own communicator of what you do, but like not to say that you're the only one saying and communicating what you do, uh, you know, PR. So third party endorsement, being quoted as an expert in your field, uh, you know, being an expert speaker, being an expert trainer. There's so many different collaborations that you can do, but uh, people just do you know, need to know. And when you're the thought leader, people will think of you as like, oh, that's the person who does, you know, the personal brand stuff. So they're the go-to. Yep. Yep. Uh, You know, that's the, oh yeah, that's the person who does all the legal contracts for small businesses. They're the go-to. Yep. Yep. And, and there's a couple of parts to it too. And, and, you know, we sort of talked a bit before about, you know, the imposter syndrome and that's on one hand, why would people want to listen to me? Um, and, and we were talking off air and you were just saying that a lot of times the roadblocks manifest themselves in different ways. I haven't got time is a, is a crucial one. Um, if it's really important, you'll find the time. Is that, how do you handle, I haven't got enough time? <laughs> yeah, well, no one has enough time, right? Like, no, the they thing. don't. <laughs> Um, No, look, I don't have enough time is just saying it's not a priority for me. And so I think once you know, I think, I think, look, there's a few bits to that. I think if you're clear on what it is that you're wanting to create, if you're clear on what it is that you're actually doing, then you're going to be so much more likely to, um, to actually do it. And when you realize that, particularly when it comes to personal brand building activities, you can do things that don't take very much time, but move the needle forward massively, right? Um, So one example being, you know, a podcast interview, it might take 30 minutes, but then that is going to be in front of, you know, that other person's audience. That's going to be in front of your own audience that could reach like, you know, thousands of people or more. I don't know. (laughs) Um, And so it's like, you know, that takes maybe 30 minutes, maybe another 30 minutes of prep. Right. But like in that one hour, you could do one a month and get in front of however many thousands of new audiences of new audience per month. Right. So it doesn't need to take hours and hours and hours of time. Uh, you just need to be really clear on what your strategy is, who you're going to re- like, who you're trying to reach, what it is that you want to say. So what are your key messages? And then just do a couple of things a month. Yeah. It's really about getting going. Um, I'm, I've always a believer. I mean, I, I'm I'm an owned media guy first, so you, you know, whether it's a podcast or a blog or a, a you know a newsletter or a video show or live streaming, which scares the the heck out of most people. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you can build up a little show like that or have that consistency, that gives you a you know I'm going to put a every fortnight I'm going to put out a newsletter. Well, then you you stick to that and that you get known for that. Don't try and do everything. (laughs) Don't try and do everything. You know, do one thing well, learn it, and then move on to something else, master something else. But uh, it's, I think that, you know, sometimes like that, people think they have to be on all channels all the time, you know, from the get-go. And it's, 
if you're going to do that, no, you won't have time. <laughs> you will run out of time. It's about being judicious with what you pick. I mean, it's 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 about choosing something, mastering it, and and moving on from that. It's, yeah, and consistency is so key. Uh, and if I can just share, Trev, like a little story about my personal brand building over over the the years. Please do. You're doing it really well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no. So when I, um, I've shared this before, but when I was in corporate, I like really hated public speaking. I resisted any kind of video for years. I was like nervous to speak up in meetings. I hated new business presentations. I was just like the last person to speak, which I know may sound weird now, (laughs) But it was so true. And I realized when I was in corporate, I was like, if, I do, if I'm if i not more visible for what I do, if I don't like get out of my comfort zone and do, do new things and build that personal brand, I'm, I just know that I'm not going to be able to get to where I want to go because, yeah. you know, the people that were in leadership were the people that would get out and speak in front of people and they were speaking at conferences and they were being seen for their expert opinion. Right. And so, yeah. And so I was like, even like whether it's a career and then of course in business, it's, you know, on another level, uh, particularly when you've got a personal brand business, you do have to get out there even more. But I was just like, you know, I have to do this. And so what I did to get started was I just decided that I was going to speak at every opportunity and I created opportunities too. So I would like build presentations that, you know, at the time I was doing, I was in the marketing team. So I was like, I'm going to show everyone how to do social media. (laughs) So I would like build these like presentations and then I would like tour the country, like, you know, showing hundreds and hundreds of people how to, uh, you know, create their social media profiles and build their brand on, on, uh, in social media. And then like, I would media train them all and I would tell them, you know, how to do interviews and whatever. But in doing that, it was like hundreds and hundreds of presentations that I had to give. (laughs) And that's how I, you know, got more comfortable speaking. And it was the same, like when I, uh, when I was in my business and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to do live video, aren't I? <laughs> and so I was like, right, I'm just going to go live on uh, Insta every single week at the same time. So every Friday I got on yep. and did an Insta live. Uh, I was so nervous to start with. I was like, cause you know, I'd come from that media training background where it was like, everything was so visible and you couldn't say the wrong thing. And, um, and, but like, honestly, it was like one person dialed into it. <laughs> so I was like, and half the time it was my husband, you know. So, <laughs> so it was like, it's totally fine. So I just practiced. I would just do, you know, for about a year I did those uh, Friday Instagrams for 30 minutes uh, and I really sucked at the start. And then I just got, and then, you know, after about a year I started getting better and then, you know. <laughs> so, you did, so you did 50 of them basically? Yeah, Okay, so let's walk through that. That's a little. It's going to be a sidebar conversation, but I need to pick you up on this because this is good. There's a couple of things too. You 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 say, and maybe even you know, you may have built your audience through it as well. But the updraft of doing live streaming is afterwards. <laughs> you know, it's good when people are there live, but you know, but at towards the end, had you built that audience up, or was it still a bit hit and miss? Uh, look, I found Instagram. I actually changed. So now I do a weekly live stream on Facebook yep. uh, in my Facebook group. Uh, and that's better. <laughs> but yeah, I found, look, t- to be fair, I didn't promote the Instagram lives very much. Cause I was a little bit like, mm. I don't want people to come. <laughs> I was like, I'll just go on and do it. And then, you know, people yeah. will probably watch the replay, which I think like when you're starting out, like that's fine. You know, it's like, <laughs> Just don't tell anyone about it and then just do it. And then, you know, you just get your practice up. But, uh, yeah, I found a lot of people would watch the replays uh, and I would have like a couple of people join live. But then, but honestly, I find my my actual, my audience is really on LinkedIn. And so, yeah, yeah so the Instagram, like corporate women, they don't have, they just don't have time to be on social media all the time. They're busy working. Right. They've got stuff to do. And so it's a bit different, like on uh, in my, you know, I've got like mastermind groups and like a whole entrepreneurial community of women around me. And a lot of them work with other entrepreneurs 
entrepreneurs who are women and they're all on social media like 24 seven. Right. And so it's pretty easy to get in front of them. It's pretty easy to target them. But I have found personally that particularly that corporate kind of audience, they're a little bit more challenging yeah, it's and and the tools today too. I mean, you can live stream simultaneously to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. It's crazy the technology that's just off the charts, and it's very simple to do. But uh, you're right. It's um, I, I really like that story, Beck, about just fronting up and doing it. And, and every now and then you see stories of people who, you know, I decided to do a video a day for 30 days or something like that. It's almost that commitment, and that's what a podcast makes you do, you know, a weekly newsletter makes you do it. I think sometimes it's it's that is you might sit back and say, gosh, that's too hard. And yes, you do got to do work, but that's how you cut through because no one else is going to do it. You know, very rarely do people do that. And that's what elevates you if you want to start cutting through. You got to do what no one else is willing to do. You got to do it. You know, like it's, there's some stats around LinkedIn that like it's still about 90 or 93% or something ridiculous uh, are lurkers. They don't create content. Like it's, you know, when if you're active on on LinkedIn, you say, "God, there's a lot of content, a lot of stuff." No, there's not. Imagine if everyone did it. <laughs> no, I love this, and I think I've heard you say it before, Trev. That it's like ninety five percent of people are looking and not engaging. They're lurkers. Yeah. Yeah, I call them lurkers, and the yeah. the thing about that is that. Uh, and you've probably got them and uh-huh. I've definitely got them and I've got business from people who I never knew, you know, they've just never interacted with me and now they're right, now they're ready, you know, and it's just taken them, uh, they sit there and they watch, people watch, they watch and they, they learn. Oh, I can't tell you how many people have said to me, and these are people I know, like let alone the people I don't know, but people I know that have said to me, oh, my God, I loved that video you did and da 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 and I'm like, you have not engaged with any of my content ever. <laughs> I know. I know. And that's this is why it could be disheartening, yeah. you know, for people. So, um, I, I mean, bring, to bring it back to the roadblocks and the mindset and everything when people – and when, what we're talking about here, Beck, is putting ourselves out there. Mm. Um, it's going to be content-driven uh, and content is speaking as well. Mm. Uh, it's, you know, even doing meetups and you know, doing little mini presentations and doing boardroom presentations, all that is content in my eyes. And that means you've got to push a little bit harder. As you said, you didn't like speaking, I didn't like speaking, mm. but you've got to do it, you know. You've, you, it's Unless you're going to be a writer and you don't want to do the speaking bit, but we, we live in a multimedia world now. So even if you're a writer and you start, you know, you've got this great blog and a newsletter and people want to know more about you, then you might be invited to be on podcasts. So therefore you've got to then push yourself through that. Oh, uh, and well, I, don't, I, I don't want people to be, you know, have angst about it, no. but really it's, it's one of the big hangups. And, the, and I can tell you now, most people that I deal with have gone through it at some stage. There's very few people who just embrace all that right from the get go. Yeah, totally. I think just a point on the, um, on the books. I mean, if you're a writer, like 100%, publishing houses are going to look at your audience. It's one of the biggest things of why they'd partner with you to publish. Oh, if you want a publisher, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. But, no, I think, look, on that point, I think look for ways to make it fun, right? Like I love doing video now and I hated it. Like I avoided it at all costs. And now I love doing videos like, you know, live streaming and chatting with my audience and all of that kind of stuff. I really enjoy that now, whereas – yeah, when I started out, I just, I was like, no way could I do that, you know? And, and so it is a matter of um, just trying things. And once you Mm. start to get better at them, you will by default start enjoying it. It will be much more fun, but like find ways to make it fun for yourself. Uh, And I actually heard when I was getting started doing the live video, someone said, um, someone that I was listening to, I forget who it was, unfortunately, but yeah, they were saying, uh, kind of sandwich the activities that you're hating between tasks that you actually love or between things you actually love Ooh. doing. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't heard that. Yeah. So like, let's say you have to do live video every Friday, you know, you've committed, you're, you know, like me, you're like, okay, I'm going to do a live video every Friday at 12 o'clock. 
Um, so maybe like, you know, at 10 AM you go out for coffee with a friend and then straight after your live stream, you might reward yourself with like a long walk or whatever, but like, you know, just, um, yeah, just, I guess, uh, before and after you do the thing that you're not wanting to do, um, wrap it around like something that you really love doing so that you start to develop more positive associations with it and you get that little reward. Oh, I like that. That's cheating yourself, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it, is. it is. Just until you actually start to really enjoy the thing. Um, but, yeah, the other thing around the mindset piece is really just, yeah, having the consistency. So if you know, like, okay, like at, you know, this X time every single week, um, I do whatever it is around the personal brand. And then if you set yourself targets to review it, like, so what's working, what's not every three months, like, you know, yeah. if I've been posting consistently on social media, is that resulting in anything, you know, in what I'm yep. trying to achieve? Uh, yeah. And once you start to see those wins from it, you are going to get hooked. Without expecting that everything you put up is going to end up in dollars because <laughs> it doesn't work that way. We're building the brand. So when you, you do do the selling and the marketing on top of the brand, um, you, you know, the work's half done at least, that people are knowing you, at least they know you, they like you. But, you know, if you want to just go in cold on people, good luck with that. <laughs> That's yeah. just getting harder and harder and harder and have deep pockets and get ready for a lot of rejection. Whereas if you become someone... Uh, that people like and others are talking about you and your front of mind, which I think front of mind is the is probably the biggest challenge these days, mm. um, then staying front of mind and for, for all the right reasons, then, um, you know, that puts you in good stead for when, you know, because not everyone's ready for what it is you do. <laughs> um, you know, it might take them a year. It might not, you know, they might never be your, your client, but they might influence someone who could be your client. And, um, you know, by sharing your content and talking about you. So there's, there's a lot to look at it holistically, but, but you're right. It's, and, and I found with my clients, they, pr they prefer once, once they get into on this day, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, they, um, they get it done. They get it done. I like to talk about with social that we, you know, that evergreen stuff that builds your narrative, get it all done in batches, make it evergreen, schedule it, put it out there, and then have the magic over and above. Oh, I'm speaking over here, or I'm doing this, or my new boardroom table turned up, or, you know, I did one the other day, I'm going off to a to a corporate function, my first one in years. And, uh, you know, that humanity, which people really buy into, you've got freedom to do that because your, your um, I guess, your brand building content is all locked and loaded and ready to go and just being scheduled out. And then you have fun and you do that, you know, that in the moment, the magic that some of the best posts, uh, whether it's LinkedIn or Twitter or Insta, um, that's they're the best posts. They, they really resonate with people. Yeah, I love that idea. So it's like... Um schedule things schedule what you can and then leave room yeah. for that kind of spontaneity spontaneity plan spontaneity yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love that so much um and so i guess the other part of it is uh another roadblock that i want to come back to is uh, i know a lot of people face but i don't see it as much today it's probably more for people who come out of a larger organization and that's the whole notion of perfection and often perfection is a is a blocker uh, but often it's an excuse so you do get the people who want to I can't put myself out unless it's perfect and to me unless you're uh, I'm trying to think of a, an upmarket unless you're Burberry <laughs> or something you know you can be a little rough around the edges I don't think anyone minds in fact I think the you know the more slick your videos are there's times to have a slick video and a signature thing but if you're you know a premium signature video that's your piece for two or three years but if you try and make every video super slick um I, seriously you'll never get anything done nothing will get no done. and i think um you want to think about like all that kind of content that you're putting out it's either to entertain um or to connect or to provide value right like it's mm -hmm. it's um you know so you don't want everything to be like here's how you do something or, you know, here's like the thought leadership and like behind the scenes of my industry. Like it doesn't all need to be that. No. You can also entertain. Like you can also show, um, you know, behind the scenes of your life and uh, share stories. And I think that is what uh, gets 
like creates that human to human kind of connection and engagement and that builds that no like and trust factor because it's almost like you've met them when yeah. you haven't <laughs> necessarily. Yeah. And that's yeah. and that's why I think um, you know, the whole notion of and it's only it's up to you as an individual how much you do that, how how transparent you are. Um, just a previous episode, I spoke to Joyce Ong from Tax Nuggets Academy, and she puts it all out there, all out, everything, <laughs> and uh, on videos and and even talking about her business and this is how much money we've made, this is how much money we've lost, whatever it is. And, and that will unsettle a few people, but it works for Joyce. It doesn't work for everyone. But if you can see what you've got to do is look around and see what f- works for you. Um, you know, you might say, I really gravitate to these types of people but I couldn't do that but be inspired by them but don't you don't have to copy anyone you got to do what's comfortable for you but then push a little bit as well that's 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 my theory anyway yeah no I I completely agree and I don't think that you need to share everything I don't think you should share everything um Mm. on social media either I think that there is a line um I feel like there's a there's a saying in the kind of online coaching community where it's like Share, um, share stories around uh, scars, not wounds, or something like that. But it's basically <laughs> like you know, if it's still really raw, don't share it. But if it's something that you've already worked through, then you can share it. But I think oh, it's nice. yeah. it's like what what's really you know what you're comfortable with in terms of sharing. I don't really share a lot. Uh, I I share like you know professionally. Um, and I do have like specific stories that I share, but I'm not like sharing everything behind the scenes of my life. Yeah. Uh, I also just don't do dancing reels. Uh, <laughs> I just draw the line. I'm just like, you I'm not sure. I thought I saw you the other day. I'm kidding. <laughs> nah, <it's that. laughs> but like, you know, other people do that and, it, and it's comfortable and it works for their brand and that's fine. But I'm that's- like, that's yeah. It. And so I think it's just like figuring out what is going to, you know, what, what feels good for you and you don't want to go yeah. too hard because then you're going to scare yourself off and you'll be like, Oh my God, you know, I've got like this like shame hangover. <laughs> like Renee Brown says the shame hangover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but really I've, I've always liked the saying where, uh, and this is going back to the early days of social media, there's the professional you, there's the, personal you and professional personal you can talk about on social yeah. then there's the private you and you, only you know where that line is yes. and and I like segmenting in on in all of those three areas professional absolutely everything that's in your professional remit I think that that's fair game personal I think add that layer of personality because otherwise you're going to bore the pants off people uh, and people won't trust you a lot as much. Um, you won't engender that trust with people. And private is private. You lock it away. I don't speak about these things. I don't speak about it. politics, religion, whatever, whatever. You say whatever you don't want to do and you lock that away and and then you've got that gives you permission to, um, to, to at least find your level of comfort uh, in putting yourself out there. Yeah, exactly. And like, there's always going to be some level of discomfort in putting ourselves out there, right? So it's like knowing that, like intuitively knowing for you, whether it's just discomfort that, you know, you're holding yourself back from putting yourself out there or whether you're like, no, I'm actually uncomfortable to share that. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Oh, that's with the blogging, used to be the blogging industry. And I've talked to people who have done this and they've talked to me and they said, oh, I put this blog and I press publish and I feel really sick. Yeah. And, and there was a saying that unless you're feeling sick when you press publish, you haven't gone hard enough on the topic. <laughs> now, I'm I'm saying I, I understand the sentiment, but it should not be, you don't want to make yourself sick. But the idea behind that is, you know, you can, if you're feeling uneasy, you're probably, you know, to cut through today and you've got a strong opinion, if this, if you've got a strong opinion on something, you go hard, you might feel a little bit queasy about pressing publish, yeah. but it's probably going to be the best thing you put out there and it'll really get noticed. So again, it's what makes you feel comfortable. I think you've said the word before, Beck, was discomfort. Yeah. You've got to embrace discomfort. Because if you stay comfortable, you won't be able to put yourself out there as you. And that, and that's what we're talking about, being authentically you, adding value, growing your community, growing your audience, and, and being an active participant in today's reputation economy. That's what we're talking about. Exactly. And, you know, you've just said it. It's all about 
the value that you're providing to others. And if you think about it, think about like, you know, all of the experts that you've listened to. Think about like all the podcasts you've listened to, all of the books you've read, all of the YouTube videos you've seen. Like imagine if none of those people put themselves out there. That's it. If they, they stayed in their comfort zone. Yeah. You'd be, you'd have nothing to learn. <laughs> you'd have nothing to learn. Like where would all the inspiration come from? <laughs> That's that's exactly right, and you know, and if you if you wanted to go hard on people like that, how dare you not share your knowledge with people? <laughs> um, I'm just going to finish up, Beck. I just want to revisit the opportunities because you know we're, it's it's such a meaty topic. All of this about putting yourself out there, you know, the whole notion of discomfort, um, challenging yourself, whether it's content, whether it's speaking, whether it's putting out a book, being on a podcast, all of that stuff, but. The upshot is there's got to be an end game. And for a lot of people, it probably is going to be about running their business. Uh, if it's not now, it probably will be in the future. Uh, as And I loved your story. You were doing this for years before you actually left your job. Yeah. Um, and so it's about evolution, not, not necessarily pivot. Some people will pivot. Yeah. Um, but it's really about evolution. And, and you, oh, I've gone through it. You're going through it. Um, you know, this is, this is your core area of expertise. Where is your experience? I'm now going to evolve over here. I need to understand my brand and bring people along for the journey. There's a little bit of thinking there. You can't just, you know, I've, I look at some people from the early days of social media who built big profiles and then they go off and do weird stuff and I don't even know what they do. You know, it's just yeah. random and yeah. there's no evolution. It's just random stuff. And yeah. I, I think that you, it's hard enough to cut through today. I think if you can bring people along for that journey. They'll run with you. They'll come with you. Yeah. I think I, I completely agree with that. And I think even when you don't know people are watching, so back to that point that you were saying that, you know, you might get discouraged if you're sharing some stuff and you're not getting the audience just yet. I think yep. people are watching or, you know, it is about trusting that the right people are watching at the right time um, and the right people are engaging at the right time because I've always personally found that to be true. And when you're starting out, you don't want that big audience anyway necessarily because you want to get used to it. Like you want to you want to build up to it. You know, you don't want to like start start with like live TV interviews right out of the gate. Right? You want to you want to start with like a you know a, an Insta live stream <laughs> <laughs> or a dancing TikTok, of course. Yeah, <laughs> either or. Yeah, and 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 we'll just finish up on those possibilities. Once you build this, this is why I said at the outset, it's an asset. Your reputation and your personal brand. That's your asset that moves with you as you go, whether it's geographically you move, whether it's you change gigs, you change industries, but you can take that. That does, you know, you've earned that over the right, but you've got to keep topping it up. You've got to keep building it. You've got to stay strategically visible. It's it's all of those things um, because today things move too quick. You can become irrelevant really quickly, and and that's sad to see people become irrelevant uh, or even think they're irrelevant. I, do, I just that doesn't sit well with me. No, no one is ever irrelevant. It's just that it's all about perception, right? Uh, not irrelevant necessarily, but in, no. professionally, they they might be in no man's land. Um, yeah. Not knowing where their next moves are, should I run a business, should I not, what's the business going to be, uh, you have that, that reputation and that brand and then you will be able to have more control over your professional life. Yeah, and I know like personally, so my, you know, building my career, my personal brand that I built during my career enabled me to create a really successful consulting business right out of the gate and if I hadn't have yep. had that, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Yep. So, yeah, your personal brand will allow you the opportunities to transition, whether it is, you know, as a professional, whether you're a consultant, whether you're uh, in a career, in a leadership position. Uh, so it is really important and it is the thing that you own that no one else does. Yeah. So I think it, it is super important to build that outside of your whatever company you're with at the moment. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Beck, thank you very much, and thank you for uh, telling your story as well. Um, it's 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 really good. You, I mean, you're eating your own dog food, as I like to say, and, uh, you know, what you're teaching people, you've gone through and yeah. you can t do it from experience as well, which is uh, terrific to hear. Um, where's the best place for people to find you and 
um, is that follow you on LinkedIn? What's the website? And uh, and you've got programs and stuff, freebies for people? <laughs> yeah, cool. So um, everything is just at becksands.com, B-E-C, sands.com. So, um, yeah, all the links to LinkedIn, Insta, um, my Facebook group, the Thought Leadership Club, is all there. So you can just um, go there for, for everything. Um, yeah. Terrific. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for having me, Trevor. Really appreciate it. The reputation economy is here. The world today needs more genuine, credible experts and leaders to stand up and share their experience, their wisdom, their stories and ideas. Are you in? 